I've looked at quite a few of the tiny keychain torches or flashlights in the past, but this one is different because it's branded Philips and it's quite odd packaging. Um, it does seem to the Philips logo on it, but it's got this huge label covering everything in the back. I kind of want to remove this label. Should I remove this label? I will. One moment, please. There we go. It looks much nicer now with the huge European compliance sticker removed from it. The sticker that interestingly says rated voltage 5 volts. Yes, yeah, it's USB rated current 5 to 12 milliamps. That doesn't make sense. So let's get that sticker out of the way since it's useless. And let's open this up and see what's inside the box. So inside the box we have a very nice bit of presentation. It's a huge box or a tiny little light. It comes with a USB lead. I've already tested this lead to try and charge it. The lead didn't work. I then tried another USB lead and it did work and it charged at 340 milliamps, as you'd expect for something like this. And there's another sticker on it. So let me just stick the boxes out the way here. And this sticker says, Made in China. Manufacturer, I'm going to have to use magnification for this. I shall zoom down. You can, you can probably read it already. Manufacturer, TPV Audio and Visual Technology, Shenzhen. So I wonder if they've just licensed. If is this a real Philipsy type product, or um, is just Philips just now a generic brand? I'm going to go with Philips being a generic brand. Let's remove this sticker because I'm just not really into stickers all over products. It's all a bit of a uh, European bu bureaucracy. Right here, there we go. Now it's it's big Clive compliant, it's got no nonsense. So let me demonstrate this working. If you press and hold, it's quite nice. It ramps up to full intensity. And when you let go, it ramps back out again. That's nice, the ramp up and down. If you click it once, it comes on at the lowest intensity, which is a good choice because I tend to prefer to run these things at their lowest intensity for longest battery life. But uh, if you leave it long enough and, and click it again, it goes straight out. It doesn't step through all the other features, which is good. If you click it again, it goes up to a higher setting. And strobe alert, it's about to start flashing. Super really annoying flashing rate as well. Okay, so basically speaking, low, high, strobe. If you double click it, then the side lights come on. You've got the ultraviolet-ish, well, the deep violet, the near ultraviolet. Um, is this going to go straight off? No, it's going to go next. It's going to be white, run at what looks like sensible levels. Then red, then flashing red, then blue, and then, of course, you need your little piece emulation light, and then it goes off. That's it. Okie dokie. Let's open it up. I say let's open it up. Maybe let's not open it up because uh, this ain't just unscrewing like most of them do. Has this been glued on? That would be most disappointing, wouldn't it? Oh, incidentally, it's got a measuring tape type thing on the side of its plastic body. I think it's plastic. He said, stick it in his mouth. Lovely. Right, tell you what. I'm going to try and get this off, but uh, it's not immediately coming off, so I shall use brute force. One moment, please. Okay, worthy of note, I applied heat, I applied a pair of pliers, so it's all gnarled now. Uh, it does eventually come off and it is threaded, but they've also put glue in it. So uh, let me take mine apart so you don't have to take yours apart, because it does kind of damage it in the process. There is a little total internal reflection lens. Uh, here is a little metal heat sink, which is quite good. There is a circuit board. Now, is this going to slide out? I shall try picking the, the button, the rubber button out, because sometimes they get in the way. And also I'll take the bung at the back out, the little charging port bung. And then I shall stick a screwdriver in and shove the switch forward and see if the circuit board slides out. It's sliding out. Righty-ho, there's an LED. I shall just use that as the next thing to push. And here is the circuit board. OK, well, you know what happens now. Let's reverse engineer the unit. Let's see what the lithium cell says on it. It's a 601035. Um, and it's 165 milliamp hour. So, uh, right, that's useful knowledge. Okie dokie. I shall take the picture and reverse engineer it. One moment, please. 
Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore a bit. Before I do that, here it is on charge, charging for a little power bank. And when it's on charge, this is it. This is the only mode you get, which is fine. The main thing is that it's saying, I want to charge the battery, but someone may require light, so it will give them light. But it doesn't matter how many times you click it, doesn't double click or whatever. You're going to get on and off. That's it at low level. That's uh, sensible. That's a logical thing. It means you can leave it powered continually and use it as a general wash light. Okay. Wash light. Theatrical term for just splash of light everywhere. Now, let's uh, zoom down on the schematics and take a closer look at them. So something worthy of note here. The lithium cell isn't the biggest, but whereas other flashlights have jammed in a much bigger cell. I'm looking for one. I'm looking for one uh, like this one here, which might be in that category where they've jammed a huge cell in. But in jamming it in, they've got it sitting on the circuit board with the hot LEDs behind it. And they've also squeezed it in between a very hot high power LED and uh, the USB charging port. So they've taken a sensible approach here. They've used a pad here, which not only lifts the cell up away from the heat of these LEDs and the circuit board, it's the cell itself is uh, shorter, so it's not pressed against that LED and the USB port. But also because it's lifted up, it means they've got generous uh, cables that are just folded underneath this. It's quite neat, actually. It's quite a good implementation. Right. Let's take a look at the schematic, well, the circuitry, before we go to the schematic. Generic microcontroller. Proper charge control chip. This is good. It's a TP4054. And miracle of all miracles, the only one of these small lights I've seen with it, it's got a lithium cell protection chip in, built in, which gives an extra layer of protection against overcharging, but also cuts the cell off if it gets over-discharged for some reason. That's good. Um, we've got the blue, white, ultraviolet and red LEDs. The blue and the ultraviolet both have a buffer transistor, but the white and the red are both driven directly from the chip. I'm guessing this is because the ultraviolet has to be driven at fairly high current to give good, decent output. And likewise, the blue, it's being used as this, a strobe and it's got a higher voltage than the red. So that's probably why they've done the blue like that. But the white runs a nice sensible about 20 milliamps when it's lit, which is very good for uh, battery life and just usability. Uh, it's also worth mentioning, uh, I'm not so keen this, for style, they've got this little smoked window here. I'd rather that was just clear so that more light came out because the smoked may give it a stylish look, but it actually attenuates the light output. Okay. Uh, other things worth mentioning before we look at the schematic. Uh, there's an A2SHB MOSFET driving the main LED via a 0.12 ohm resistor. We've got two little LEDs that are just a red and green chip in each, one common 1K resistor, and uh, it makes the uh, ring around the button illuminate. It's worth mentioning that as well as the main LEDs fading up and down, even the little indicator LEDs fade up and down as well. It's quite nice, actually. The software in this is very different to the cheap generic Chinese ones. That's They may have a thing that to comply with the requirements for using the Philips logo, if this is an official Philips uh, branded item, it will be that thing with the lithium cell sensibly positioning and also uh, nice features sensible features and that fading up and down. It's all very attractive and pleasant. Right, let's take a look at the schematic. Here is the schematic. I shall zoom down on this a little bit more. Okay, we've zoomed. Let's explore. So there's the USB port and another miracle. If you plug it into a smart charger, it's got the two 5.1K resistors to the zero volt rail that signals back to that charger that it can put power out. So this will work with a, a USB to USB lead plugged into a smart power delivery type charger. We've got a divider that signals to the microcontroller that it is plugged into the charger, and that's what enables that just simple on or off mode at low level. We've got a classic 4054 chip with a 3K resistor for setting the charge current. Also, the charge, the output of this that pulls low, 
to indicate that it is in a charging state, goes over to the microcontroller, that's presumably pulled high by a sort of pull-up resistor, and uh, when that pulls low uh, to show it's charging, then this knows it's charging. That really is just controlling these little LEDs. I should write next to that that uh, I'll just write X2, because there's two of those LEDs in parallel, two reds and two greens. Quite a nice visual effect. Um, there is a, a decoupling capacitor across the microcontroller. There's also a decoupling capacitor to the zero volt rail. I shall add them in. Hold on. Let's do that little thing that uh, they do on zero volt rails. That little symbol. And here we'll show the capacitor and we'll show that little grounding symbol. Saves just wires everywhere. And there's also one that input. So that's a capacitor and going to the zero volt rail. Excellent. Now everything's there. So the decoupling capacitor for the microcontroller itself locally, the microcontroller, and it's controlling the red and yellow LEDs directly. It must have current limited outputs. Um, it's got the red and green LEDs being controlled here. It's got the uh, button pulling to the zero volt rail. And then these are also pulling low. These are driving the T2YPNP. Uh, transistors, and they drive the blue and the ultraviolet LED. I should write UV next to that because it's probably not clear that it is supposed to be UV. I used purple. I thought that was kind of UV-ish. I've got a purple pen. Oh, no, I've got the purple pen up here. Is it actually not? Hold on. I'll just put a big dot here and see. Is it purple? It is. It's not bad. It looks very close to blue on the schematics, but I could use that in future for, for the near ultraviolet. Anyway, uh, moving on. So those, uh, the blue and the ultraviolet are controlled by two PNP transistors. And then we get a 10K pull down on an A2SHB, very classic MOSFET for the higher current of the big white LED. And that uh, has a, the 0.12 ohm resistor and sears with it. Now, current. Uh, I've kind of got the, I'll put this in the description. That's the best bet, but I'll stick it here at the moment. It's on a post-it note. Low was about 60 milliamps. I measured these all at 3.8 volts because that happened to be the charge uh, status of the cell at the time. And I just simply put a DC clamp meter in line with the uh, on the uh, cable from the lithium cell. The high setting was 490 milliamp, but it gradually reduced down to 125. The flashlight, that's when you push it, lights at the brightest. It's 700 milliamps, but then it sinks down to 125 milliamps. Uh, that, so it's pulses modulating. Not sure. What is the pulse of modulation like? Hold on, I'll just... Right, okay. Uh, you're seeing the... You're probably seeing the... Can you see flicker? No, that's the main thing. Uh, shaking it back and forth isn't any good because it's got the... You know, you've got that rolling shutter thing. But the main thing is I'm not seeing pulse of modulation. Let me... Uh, try the LED at the side. No, I'm not seeing pulse of modulation there either. Right, this is good. So the flashlight's under milliamp dropped to 105. The strobe is a average 350 milliamps, but then it also drops to 200. The UV is about 130 milliamps. Um, the white is about 22 milliamps, the red 24, strobing red is 12, and the blue is about 64 milliamps. Um, and then when it's doing the red blue flashing, it's an average of about 30 milliamps. It does various effects. It does the sort of like multiple strobes backwards and forwards, and then it does backwards and forwards, and then it flashes them both together. It does what, what all the geeks want their flashlight to do. Do they really want it to do that? I'm not sure. Anyway, that's more or less it. Uh, there's the protection chip. It's an R312A. It uses a 100 ohm resistor, probably a 100 nanofarad capacitor, across the lithium cell, taps off that as for a nice smooth reference and uh, determines whether it's going to cut the negative connection to lithium cell or not. Uh, but that is it. I've covered everything. Yes. But there we have it. It's actually quite nice. It's a nice presentation. It's going the full hog with the Philips branding and stuff like that. And there are features in it that just are better than your average little LED flashlight. So it's it's not that much more expensive. This came from AliExpress. I'll provide a link. I think it was about four or five pounds. Uh, but that's all right for um, 
for the features this offers and the quality. I should have warned you. I didn't, I didn't really think about the strobing there. Sorry. Uh, but there we have it. Uh, it's quite a neat little light. Very worthy indeed.